What is up, MFers? My goodness, crazy times right now in the bass fishing tournament industry. If you look around at all the buzz and chatter on all these videos out there, people trying to get famous, you will quickly see a whole lot of bitching and complaining about this organization doesn't, doesn't pay out enough money and why are these sponsors not paying me thousands of dollars even though no one knows who I am at all and Ford Fisher Sonars are going to get banned it's the end of the sport it's the only reason people catch them oh, it's going to get banned it's going to get banned and the problem is this is just all noise that doesn't really mean much you look around on the screen right now you're going to see a few companies that you're probably familiar with in the fishing industry that are a part of one of the biggest issues with the fishing industry that other pros are not able or not willing to talk about that is a very dirty little secret we're going to go ahead and just expose in today's video and the good thing is as you guys know i'm me i'm not a corporate shill i'm not bought and purchased by anyone and i can say things that um, a lot of people either can't or they're too afraid to say because they would straight up get blackballed or dropped from sponsors like we've seen so much lately. Anyways, let's dive into this issue. You guys can comment down below if you agree or disagree with me, but I'm gonna tell you some things that I know you have not heard or really thought about that um, is a pretty sad part of this industry. All right, we're gonna put up a damn visual aid here at this shitty little Airbnb. Perfect. So I threw a poll up on Instagram this morning asking you guys, the fans, what you thought the biggest issue was with professional tournament bass fishing right now. And I got a lot of answers. A lot of really good answers actually. A lot of funny ones too. And of course there's a lot of comments saying, you know, people bitching about live scope. We got issues with rules and cheating. It's boring to watch live sometimes. But the main thing that I'm hearing over and over and over and one reason or another is this guys. We need the green one. Money, in whatever capacity that might be, pay out to anglers, it costs too much money to get into the sport, it costs too much money to be competitive because I don't have enough money to spend on a boat. I don't got enough money to spend all the new sonar I need. I don't got enough money to spend on tackle. A lot of people don't understand how we got to the point where this is a rich man sport where there's not better payouts than there was 40 years ago, even though there's thousands more tournament anglers spending millions more dollars. Why is the industry not getting bigger? Why is there not more money available for the people that are spending it in the industry? Well, like I said at the start, I am going to share with you one giant reason for that that everyone is too afraid to talk about. I think it's important to go back to where what I believe is the biggest issue with money right now in our sport began. Anybody familiar with this year right here? Was there something like a virus, for instance, that might have started that year? Yeah, that's right. So even though we've had this issue with our sport for a very long time that's gotten worse and worse over time, this right here was really something that accelerated and got us to where we are at today. I don't know if I should say that word out loud because I'll probably get canceled on YouTube as well. So it happens and people no longer go here. This is off, like a corporate office building. Timmy's in here, got the computer screen there. He's in his chair, it's got rollers on it. Okay, so this is 2019. You got Timmy with his desk job here at work, watching out the back window. There's a lake, of course, it's terrible. His bud's out here blasting down the lake, fishing, and he's at work. So then the old COVID-19 happens, and Timmy no longer has to be at work. So now Timmy, works right here. He's at home and he's happy now because he doesn't have to go deal with all the corporate assholes. He's at home, he's happy now, right? That's a blue dog and those are bushes. This is his house. But over time, because he's been at home for several months, we got his wife Gina here. She's getting real sick of having to stay inside. Now Timmy's mad. But you know what Timmy and Gina are about to do to make themselves happier. Timmy, he gets a great idea now. And this is the same idea that so many people in the fishing industry and not in the fishing industry, they got the same idea too. And it created a boom 
in that thing we started talking about, money. Timmy decided, you know, even though he's never actually fished more than like, you know, three times during a summer when he was seven years old, he is going to go out and he's going to purchase himself a brand new $90,000 bass boat because that will get his family out into the outdoors. That is what hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people did. Since, you know, they work from home now, they can fuck off and not actually do any work on their laptops and they're going to now have family vacations and spend their time out in the wild instead of all cooped up with uh, people coughing on each other and stuff. And you guys know what that does to the fishing industry. People go out and they buy freaking bait casters and they're buying fishing rods. That's a really big bait caster compared to the fishing rod. And they're out there buying damn crankbaits out the ass. And they're buying worms. Those are worms. And they're out there buying damn corny ass t-shirts that they saw a professional on TV wear. See him out there in, in damn public looking like a some type of covert water ops. Just the corniest shit you should never wear in public or probably anywhere. So then all these companies in the fishing industry that are selling said products got some of this going on. So we're like, eh, eh, it's okay. It's okay, 2020, boom! That's what it looks like in the fishing industry. So at this point, we are into a huge boom phase in the entire outdoor industry. Many of you guys remember that, right? But we run into some problems because there's also that C word that we're not gonna talk about in this place too. Fucking islands or something over here. China. That's not a thought bubble, that's a country, folks. So China, get shut down, boom. Because they can't work either, because they caught the C word. Fucking thing. And now we build another chart. Here's 2010. That's not in scale at all. Here's 2020, and most importantly, demand, <whistles> supply, and that leaves us with an issue. So here's our buddy Tommy up close. And Tommy, he's a small business owner. And he says, that's what he says right there. Because he don't have any more crankbaits, any more corny fishing shirts, any more boats or, hell, you guys remember this? You couldn't get a damn pack of worms. You couldn't get hooks. You want to get a boat? That's great. But for some reason, they don't have wiring available for the damn boat for 18 more months because you can't get a hold of anything. Well, good news, folks. Tommy, the small business owner, he's about to get bailed out. Let's give this guy a, we'll give him a red tie. Well, that brings us to this guy right here who's going to bail out little Tommy. This guy right here is corporate douche. I'm going to make him... Probably a little bit more realistic here. There we go. He's watching all this go down and he's like, you know what? We got billions and billions of dollars and maybe we own a damn, we own a furniture company. We, we own a cleaning products company. We sell, we had a washing machine company, a refrigerator company. And it seems like the market doesn't want to be indoors anymore. They want to go outdoors. And oh my gosh, we look over there at the outdoor industry and guess what, guys? He sees a whole lot of this. We got this going on. <laughs> Maybe some of that going on too. He's looking at the companies in the fishing industry saying, you know what, I don't know a damn thing about fishing. I don't give a fuck about fishing, but I got billions of dollars and I'm seeing the fishing industry going like this. And you know what? They probably got the same supply chain issues as all the other industries. So then we go back over here. I think his hair was like this. We got old Tommy. This guy picks up the phone. He calls old Tommy. He's like, Tommy, looks like the fishing industry is doing well. Tommy's like, yeah, bad. He says, yeah, we've, uh, we've been investing in some fishing companies actually. We're very interested in the outdoor industry. It means a lot to us to uh, get into the outdoor industry. And Tommy's like, yeah, man, we've been, we've been killing it, but you know, the problem kind of is we, we can't keep up with the, the demand. We, we can't get our products from overseas. We sold everything in our warehouse. Now I got employees sitting here and they don't got anything to pack into our, our boxes. Not even any of those ugly shirts. He's like, wow, man, that, uh, that sucks. Um, what are your sales like? And Tommy's like, well, we sold, you know, 
two million dollars in the last year before that our biggest year ever was 87 cents we made in profit once and he's like wow two million dollars but you can't keep the product in and tommy's like nah nah i can't keep the product in and so this guy says what if we give you 10 million dollars for your small business over here your little your little ugly shirt company or your, your hook company and so tommy's over here like that's his jaw right it's on the floor it's really low so this guy tells tommy he's like yeah you can still we require you to stay on, you know, just to kind of run things a little bit, but we'll buy you guys out. We'll, we'll be the, the primary owners and, and shareholders of the company, and you will be a millionaire. You just got to sign this, this little, you know, 400 page agreement that has a lot of fine print on it, and we're going to buy you guys out. Now, Tommy, just a little redneck, he never had any money in his life, and so he's immediately like, get back. They do one of these with their really, really short arms they hold hands together on go for a walk no they shake hands so he buys the company so hopefully you guys are following along so far that brings me to the issue with the industry and we'll elaborate what the issue is in just a second these two letters right here you guys familiar with what that means pe private equity private equity holdings companies whatever you want to call them it's just a vague term that basically means it's a bunch of people with billions of dollars and a bunch of people with billions of dollars that have people below them with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars or even billions of dollars investing in their company and they are leaving it up to this giant entity made up of all these parts and people and businesses together. They're leaving it up to them to go out and invest their money into different companies that are going to in turn make them more money. Let me tell you what is wrong with that and why it is fucking up the fishing industry. So the reason that a private equity company buys out one of these small businesses is obviously so they can give themselves and their investors a large return on investment. And so what they are going to do is try to change something either with their financial direction of the company or the way that it's operated, the operational strategy of that company to turn a margin, to make changes so they can see a profit immediately, a short-term profit. They're gonna do this. Here's like a, a product sales list. You got how many times it sells and you got uh, worth a, uh, Shitness. Okay, so how good the product is basically. Here's our products over here. We got A, B, C, D, E, F. Product A, three out of five stars. How good it is sales wise, five out of five sales wise. B, awesome product, but it's got a niche following. So it doesn't sell great. Now, product C sucks balls, but it catches the angler maybe not so much the fish or it's a boat that delaminates after you use it for six months because it was just trying to turn a product over really quick in an assembly line but it gets a lot of sales so here's what happens even though the small business owner has been able to put out a good product for a long time in the industry and they understand that it's not all about this side of the sheet right here because well the customers even though this one is an awesome product and doesn't sell very well, you gotta keep that product around. There's a reason that we came out with a five inch biffle bug, even though it's got a niche following of people like me and Zark and other people that know it's legit, just an example. So the private equity douche is gonna look at this and he's gonna see, and he's gonna do this. We're going with these. And the end of that is the consumer back to Timmy turns out his boat delaminated even after he only used it for a month and the damn crankbaits he bought don't catch fish because the damn things sink now because they're making too many of them too fast. Here's another part of the problem. Take the exact same chart, replace this with the employees at the company that just got bought out. Now back when the small business owner owned said company that got bought out, we had Tom, we had Bob, we had Jill, and we had Gina. But anyways, corporate douche looks at this employee list and this is what he sees. So that's their new names right there. And guess what he's looking at right here. Goodbye employee A, goodbye employee C. We're gonna keep B and D because it makes sense financially for us in the short term to not pay out as much and regardless it'll all balance out on the sheet here and the problem is you also take that another step further and the exact same table applies to you guys guessed it 
the fisherman on the pro staff right here. Now the pro staff guys here, they used to be able to call and talk to the small business owner. They'd work their deals every year and they had a good relationship. They built it over a long period of time and they got to the standing where they were even making some decent amount of money even though you know, Randy hadn't caught a fish since 1982. Gary's not much better. He's still fishing at the top level of the sport, even though he hadn't accomplished anything in 30 years. But we got Kevin and Bobby over here killing the game. Kevin's making more money than anybody. And Bobby over here, well, he's newer to the game, and so he doesn't have a huge salary, even though he's pretty good. So once again, this is how corporate douche sees the pro staff. There you go. You hear these pro fishermen bitching and complaining about the money's going to this place. The money's going to the influencers. No one wants to pay me as much anymore. Now, obviously, there's a lot more money in sponsoring someone with a huge following with a lot, a lot of potential for sales on the social media platforms as opposed to someone that just puts a logo on the side of their boat. But you talk to a lot of these guys on the inside, it's, it's conversations that they have with their old pro staff manager and, and the companies that they've worked for for decades. And the opinions of those conversations don't really make it out to the public. And those opinions are that I don't even know who the fuck to get a hold of anymore. This person's treating me like a number on a spreadsheet. They cut me last year. Now I'm jumping from company to company. I got this boat one year, this boat the next year. I got this hard bait company this year. They got bought out and now they want me to have all freaking the same companies, rods, reels, line, hard bait, soft bait, terminal tackle, when in the past, all I was using was their damn crankbait. And I used to have a great relationship with Giant of the Pro Staff Manager. All of a sudden, the new guy that comes in, all he cares about is numbers on a spreadsheet. He cut everybody else. He said he's gonna cut me too. He's not gonna pay me my 20,000, 5,000, $1,000 for the year unless I go from using my line to switching all my products on my boat and slapping their stickers all over everything to their brand. And so that angler used to work for several different smaller companies. Now he works for one big conglomerate. And the problem is he didn't give a shit about that company's rods. He didn't like their reels. He thinks their line's trash. It comes straight from China. It's fucking terrible stuff. The terminal tackle isn't any good, but they made a decent crankbait back in the past anyways, when they were actually, you know, making them to not sink like a rock because the small business owner was actually looking over the quality of the product that they were putting out. So that leaves it to you, the consumer. How does that affect you? If you haven't seen enough already here about how that affects you, well, I'll tell you directly how that affects you. You were a big fan of Kevin, sorry, of C over here, now C Angler. You bought his product for years because you thought he had the best cranking rods. That's what he was good at. So you went out and picked up 37 quantum cranking rods, but now, well shit, now he's, he's using everything from these other companies. Wonder why he's using everything for those companies. Oh, that's right. I did a Google search and I realized that a corporate conglomerate owns all said companies that he is now using their products and promoting their products to you, the consumer, even though maybe it's just a dollar sign. It's not necessarily a good product. Now, as a small business owner like myself, there's something else really, really slimy and disgusting that also happens that you as the consumer will never see during this process. I don't really know how to draw a graphic for this one, so I'm just gonna explain it to you really quick. When the corporate douches offer to buy small company over here, and small company says, they want to buy us because they think they can run it better and make a better margin, but I don't think we've maximized our potential. We're still on the upward climb. We're not going to sell out to corporate douche over here. We'll just tell them no. So a small business owner says, I appreciate your time, corporate douche, but um, we're going to just handle things on our own over here. And the corporate douche over here is like, all right, little buddy, keep up the great work growing your company. You ever want to make some real bucks? We're just a phone call away. <sighs> now the problem with that is corporate douche over here looks at the old employee sheet from small business owner over there. He hops on old LinkedIn and he's like, you know what? Those guys aren't gonna be able to design crankbaits too well without their head engineer. I'm gonna offer him twice as much money to come work for me. Oh, and while I'm looking at it, I see on their sheet over here um, from their orders that um, they actually are getting all of their soft plastics made at this little company over here. So uh, I'm gonna buy that little company and um, yeah, we'll just see what happens with the pricing when that small business owner goes to order his plastics the next time. Got a feeling it might be a little bit higher to the point where, uh, yeah, they're, uh, 
they're gonna be screwed. And guess what, guys? That's what happens. They buy out all of your resources, whether that be your employees, your factories, your products, to the point where you have no choice but to sell to this corporate conglomerate. And guess what? If you wanna sue them, you wanna sue these guys because they took all your employees? Corporate guy's got the lawyers. He's got all the say, he's got the power. And he'll scare the shit out of you. He'll, he'll send them to your house. He'll send you letters every day. You want to be small business owner and spend $200,000 in legal fees trying to fight Mr. Corporate Douche over here? Hell no. You can't afford it. Corporate Douche knows that. And as a consumer, you'll never see that, but it happens all the time. This leads me to my last and number one issue with the private equity conglomerates making the fishing industry smaller by purchasing up everything that's possible. And that is this chart right here. Let's make one quick. So here's us right here, 2023. We got 2015, 2020, 2025. So we were sucking down here with our revenue. COVID comes along, boom, we're right here. Now it's starting to come down a little bit, it's starting to come down a little bit. People aren't as interested in being outdoors anymore because they're going back to work or they realize, you know, that Timmy's boat delaminated. Now he's He's out of a fucking boat and doesn't want to buy one anymore because they used it for two hours on a Sunday one time. And so he's selling his boat. So all of a sudden things are starting to come down a little bit, right? As far as revenue goes. So everything we just talked about was happening right here. You guys notice something about right here? Shit was going fucking great. So all that stuff I just told you that was bad for the professional anglers, that was bad for the employees of the company, was bad for the past owner of the company, and is bad in turn for the consumer. That all happened when shit was good. What do you think is gonna happen in 2024, 2025, 2030, when this does what it has already started to do and it starts to level itself out? Because the private equity companies they bought when it was right here and they're gonna sell when it's right there. They're gonna make their money. So what happens to the pro anglers that uh, were not selling very many products and starting to get cut when shit was good up here? So what happens to the tournament angler when we're right here? When they were fans of a company's baits and they had to switch over all their rods, reels, line, apparel, everything to that brand. Now that brand is right here or What if the brand is right here? As a professional angler, you thought shit was bad there or there. What's that gonna look like? What's that gonna look like for people that are working inside the fishing industry? And where does that leave you as a consumer with quality of product, with diversity of different products in the industry? You're probably gonna be right down there in the exact same place as everybody that's involved in this right here. So for anyone that wants to spend their off season this year bitching, complaining about live scope needing to be banned or about not making enough money from the pro staff even though you don't provide any value, we need a different format, a five fish limit or three fish or 916 fish limit and it'll be a better TV product. I strongly encourage you to stop and look at the corporatization of this entire industry and what that means for you. The number one sentiment I see in my comment section on the chat boards and even pro fishermen and fishermen in general bickering at the boat ramps is that this sport is all about money. You can't get into it without money. You can't be successful or compete without money. The rich man is taking from the poor man. But I promise you there's something happening behind the scenes that's much worse and that is the super rich man taking away from everybody. Guys, there are tens, if not hundreds of thousands more anglers across our country and across the world competing in bass fishing tournaments right now in 2023 than there was 30 to 40 years ago. These anglers are willing to spend six figures on a boat, a truck, electronics, rods, reels, shitty, ugly camo, water camo clothing, line, travel expenses, lodging, gas. Now, even with inflation over that period of time and all the millions and hundreds of millions of dollars those anglers have dumped in to these brands, into the organizations, into the entire sport, you don't see any significant rise on what you're receiving back as an angler or a consumer. In many cases, it's gone the other direction. Where the hell has that money gone? I'll show you.
This is the super rich taking away from our entire industry. And guess what? They're gonna use these short-term tactics to drain every last drop out of it until it's left with whatever it's left with, guys. So if you're a consumer, I would think very strongly about where you spend your hard-earned money and where that's gonna go. If you're a pro tournament fisherman, I'd be looking pretty heavily into some of these companies before you sign on the dotted line and put all of your faith, all of your money, and all of your career into one pot that could very easily go away. If you're a small business owner, I strongly encourage you to think about the long term before you let these guys think about the short term. And I sure as hell hope after watching this, next time you open your mouth and talk about growing the sport, you think a little bit more in depth about how you can actually grow the sport instead of shrinking it.